I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get political because, and I know we're in the middle of a political season and there are a lot of moving parts. And, and the purpose of this channel is not going to be vote this way, vote that way. But what I am going to say is just get up and vote. If you believe strong enough in, in what you believe in, get out and vote. And part of the reason I ask people to vote isn't because I want you to be Democrat, Republican, independent. It's because there are people in this country whose personhood was legislated. And so I would not be able to give you this YouTube channel with any of this content had my personhood not been legislated, making me a, a full human in this country. So I think that's important to get out and vote. So get out and vote. It's your civic duty. You have the ability to do it. And there are a lot of people that died for you to, to get there. But what I do think is interesting and, and the, the scary part about it is one of the things that I think as, an, as a country we have the opportunity to, uh, to do better at is really focusing, as opposed to just getting the right answer, really getting into showing our work. How did you get from A to Z? Why, why is this the best idea for this particular circumstance right now? It's kind of interesting because that really leads itself into critical thinking. And, and we live in a time now where I can ask you what news station you listen to, and I'll know exactly how you line up. Now, is it exactly? That might be a little superfluous, but I think that, um, you know, if you're, if you're left-leaning, you're, you're watching CNN. If you're right-leaning, then you're, you're, you're watching Fox. And then if you're um, kind of an independent thinker, you might be watching the, you know, independent media. Although a lot of independent, independent media will have a swing one way or the other. Um, but I, I, I generally, genuinely appreciate uh, news shows that just give us the news. Tell us what it is. I think the editorializing of our news takes away from people's ability to think, and it takes away from the obligation that we have to share factual information. You know, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, we talk a few times a week, although I haven't talked to him this week. But from time to time, we'll get into these conversations about political things, whether it's politics itself, we'll talk about an issue, we'll talk about uh, just a, a particular topic. And so what I have a tendency to do is when a topic is something that I'm going to be talking about or something that's in front of me is I'll try to go in and find what is the objective information that sits behind this piece of information. And they, uh, and, and, and what happens and what I find is, is I'll come into the conversation, you know, with a whole host of facts of this is what I know to be true. This is what I don't know. So on and so forth. And I'll let the conversation just kind of flow. But what happens a lot of times is with the way that our news is set up is it editorializes the news in such a way that you think you know the full scope of the story, but you only know a piece and the rest of that is opinion. And where that gets dangerous is because then you get opinions that are purported as fact and can have the impact of swaying other people's opinions. And I, I think that's dangerous for a lot of different reasons. I think it's dangerous because it could impact people's livelihoods. It could impact the outcome of, of this year of this year and, and, and future year's elections. Uh, it could impact life decisions that people are gonna make. It's really critical to understand what is it that I'm what is it that I'm talking about? Because Again, it's it's just it's just it's a dangerous it's a really 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 dangerous thing. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I have a friend of mine who I was we were having an, a conversation, and, and he's a bit of a uh, you know he I don't want to say he's a conspiracy theorist, but I, I think he some of the information he get is highly editorialized, and it, it comes from different sources. And so one day we were talking, and he said to me, he says, you know. I think that I was, I was reading something and it says, because the number one way to gain credibility in a conversation that somebody's having with me is to say, I was reading something. Because then you say, okay, well, if it was written, then there's maybe some truth to it. So he says, I was reading an article the other day 
And, you know, I don't trust Bill Gates because Bill Gates says math is racist. How is math racist? One plus one is always two. And so I, I said to him, I said, you know, I don't think I've ever heard that. I've heard different things about math curriculums in school and so on, but I never heard that math in and of itself was racist. I said, send me that article. So he said, I'll send you the article because at this point he was really happy to have stumped me on a piece of information. So I said, all right, cool, send me the information, send me the article. So he sends me the article and the article was from a, a small newspaper up in the Northeast that I think was a politically leaning newspaper or a conspiracy leaning newspaper. And I, you know, as I always do is I, I look for the sources and I, I, I wanted to figure out what are the, what are the sources for this information? And so what he was referring to is there was an organization that Bill Gates, uh, I guess the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation supports. I don't know the details of that. I, I forgot this was a while back, but what, he, what they talked about was the fact that math is interpreted and numbers are learned differently by different people. And so by, you know, by having, you know, let's say African-American students may learn math in certain environments may learn math different than Latino students in a different environment, which may learn different than traditional methods of teaching math. And so if that is the case, then we're looking to find and tailor a curriculum to help students understand math a little bit better. And it's funny because I remembered back to a day when I went to one of my uh, daughter's uh, open houses. And when we went to the open house, along the board, there were all these numbers along the board. And so we sat there, you know, being the all-knowing parents that, that know it all, right? Because that's what we are. So I go and we're sitting there and we're trying to figure out what in the hell are these numbers up here? And so we look and we see these numbers on the wall. And so what the teacher says, I want everybody to look at the number and think of the ways that you can get to that number. So I think my number was 12. So, you know, you have 12 plus zero, 11 plus one, nine plus three, uh, 48 divided by four. But there were all of these ways to, to get to number 12. And what she had mentioned to me was that this is how we teach math here because it helps us, helps people think about math a little bit differently than one plus one is two, which is, you know, when I was a kid, um, it was all, it was all rote memorization. And so it's, it's really that, that ability to kind of think through, uh, think through issues and so on. And so when I went back to him, I said, Hey, look, um, here's what this organization does. Here's what it looks like. And here's how it goes. And so while he may have latched on to a host of other conspiracies, he didn't latch onto that one anymore because he had the information. And so again, I just think it's critically important that we as people, we as Americans, and in one of the most important times in our history, just let's focus on, on what's factual. Let's focus on what we know to be true and what we can what we can prove. Um, you know, and, and I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna summon my, my inner George Orwell uh, 1984 and say that you know the news is fake news or that there's a bunch of double speak and things like that but what i will say is that the conversation has a lot more credibility when you understand at least enough of the details to have a conversation about the facts as opposed to your opinion um there was another one uh, i was having a conversation the other day with somebody about something a more current issue and i won't talk about the issue uh, just because I don't want to make it about the issue, but about the thought process that goes behind it. And so he was giving me some information that he had heard on somebody's YouTube channel or someplace else. And it was kind of funny. Uh, it's kind of funny because as he was talking to me, I was on my phone, you know, thanks to Google and started to um, started to research it just to get a general idea of what some of the facts were. And so as I got to some of the facts, along with some of the sources, there was an article from the Associated Press. And this article from the Associated Press also had sources that were behind it. So as I tried to explain to him that what's happening actually isn't this, it's this over here, he continued to fight and kept asking me, well, how do you know? Well, how do you know? 
And I'm saying, well, I'm not the one that purported this as fact, but in an article that I've read with the Associated Press on this particular topic, they explain what the misconception is as well as what's actually happening out there in the real world. And so once they, once they define that, then they show the sources. He's like, but how do you know? But how do you know? I said, because you have the sources. And at some point, um, again, different people have different opinions about whether it's the news, whether it's, you know, whatever it is. People have opinions about everything. But you at least want to have enough credibility in a conversation to answer the first or second line questions about how did you get from A to Z? Because if you don't, then what you're doing is you're not doing it a service. And right now, I think we're in such a critical time as a country that it's important for us to have a strong understanding of how our government works. Why do certain bills have things in it that don't impact me? Well, because you've got 400 plus people in the House of Representatives across 50 states and a bunch of different places that have different opinions and have different needs. And so in order to get it passed, you can't have one session for every issue. But if you understand that, then you start to understand how things are put in because different people have different priorities. Do we all have priorities in terms of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Sure, we should. Um, and I'm not going to say that that's always uh, driven, but I, I think that's the case. But what we but what we should know is is how our government works, how we got to where we were. Um, I think if somebody, I think if people understand, uh, people that say I'm not going to vote because voting doesn't help X people or Y people, what I'll say to them is it absolutely does because at the Constitutional Convention when they talked about having blacks be three-fifths of a man, not for representation purposes, but just to dilute the power in the South. Our personhood was not, um, was not uh, legislated until, until much after that. And that's because people being put in the, in the House and Senate and so on. Do our politics need help? Absolutely. Do we need help as a country? Absolutely. But I still am happy at the fact that I don't wake up uh, in the morning thinking there's a regime change and that um, I'm going to have a dictator uh, running my country. So uh, and, and putting myself or my family at risk. So again, this is just, it's, 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 it's my thoughts around the news. Just focus on really thinking about the issue. Uh, try not to believe everything you hear first blush. If I ever give you something or tell you something that's not correct, I'd like you to straighten me out about it because I have some very, very strong opinions, but we just haven't gotten there yet. But I, I do want to share with you some of my thoughts around you know how we get to stuff because if we're going to get to a point where we bring the channel together and have live debates then i'd like to i'd like people to understand how i think how my thought process is how i solve problems and it's 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 always fact based it's trying to figure out what do i know to be true and and real and and what's going to create the 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 most positive impact for the most people involved so that's it for today. Um, but I, again, I just thought I'd get on the horn, give you guys something to, to take a look at uh, or to listen to rather. And unless you want to take a look at me, which I'm, I'm flattered. Um, but if you really want to flatter me, hit that subscribe button. I'm, I'm getting, you know, the channel seems to be taking off and I'm really excited about the fact that there are some people that I think are finding this content important. But what really helps me is if you hit that subscribe button, you hit that like button so the, the YouTube algorithms push this stuff out into the to the YouTube verse. And, you know, and as, and then we start getting into real conversations where I can maybe have some dialogue with some real people where we can talk about things that are on your mind um, and, and really just start talking about the issues. I think this is one of the most important times in history. I think that um, it's important to have real conversations. And, you know, and, and for those of you that are thinking about early retirement, you know, I can give you my perspective. You know, the one of the, one of the things that I love the most about being retired is I don't really have to care about what other people think about anything that I say um, because it can't, it's not going to impact me. I'm not going to go and, and defame somebody or say anything like that. I, I, I am smart enough to know that the First Amendment doesn't protect everything. But in terms of opinions and things like that, I think it's critically important that we have those conversations. Um, every time I have one of these conversations in real life, it turns into a really long and broad conversation because not enough people are talking about it. And maybe they are. I just don't hear them. But the people that I know aren't having these types of conversations. And so if the people I know aren't having these conversations, then there's a chance that there may be 
other folks in the world that aren't having these conversations. And so I want to be, you know, really become a safe space for us to just have opinions, have dialogues. And if things, if we agree, we agree. If we don't, we don't. And then if there's advice that you need or perspective that you're looking for as it relates to, you know, kind of life as the early retirement person, then I'm, I'm here for that too. I've, I've got your back 100%. So again, this is Salvador Gigante. Uh, thank you for taking time to be uh, in this channel. Uh, you know, you could have been anywhere else in the world right now, but you're here with me and I appreciate that. But again, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Have a good rest of your day and we will talk soon.